Welcome to this introductory episode of Leeway Productions podcast, 10 Minute Musicals. I am your host, Luke Hereford. And I am your other host, Angara Glee. Hello, other host, Ang Harrod Lee. How are you doing today? I'm not too bad, thank you. Plodding on, as we all are, I think. Absolutely, we're all plodding on, all trying to do different creative things. What have you done creatively in this unusual time? Oh my gosh, what have I done? I'm not sure. I am really busy, but I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. Not creating, I think, um, planning, I think, more, more than anything. Working a lot with the community, which is nice. Um, Lovely. I'm working a lot with an older writers group. RCT creative writers so that's been lovely and uh, connecting with new people that's great the most creative I've gotten is uh dyeing my hair pink well, until you've now ach- <laughs> you've achieved you have achieved I have achieved it? <laughs> it's very pink but uh until now and we're recording a podcast which yeah. is lovely isn't it yeah exciting very exciting uh so we have come together to record this introductory episode of Leeway Productions podcast, 10 Minute Musicals. We wanted to just take some time to explain to you, our lovely listeners, exactly what you can expect from Leeway Productions podcast when it drops in a few weeks. And also we're gonna spend a little bit of time unpacking exactly what is a 10 minute musical. So Ang Harrod Lee, why didn't you start by telling us what is a 10 minute musical? 10 minute musical is a vehicle for new writers of musical theatre to come together so leeway kind of broker relationships between writers and composers who may have tried to write a musical in the past or people who haven't even thought about writing a musical and trying to broker those relationships and give people a toolkit and some new skills and send them off to play. So we give them um, a template to follow. People don't have to follow that template, but it's really very much um, almost a laboratory kind of environment that we don't expect any outcomes. Most people do achieve the 10 minute musicals. Uh, We've had a few partnerships which haven't, but they've still been fruitful partnerships. Um, But it's very much to give artists playtime, yeah, in a nutshell. Great. That is a really, uh, a really lovely detailed nutshell, if I've ever heard one. Um, And speaking of all of those artists whose relationships we have started or brokered, as you used that lovely term, um, most of what we'll be doing each week in this podcast is interviewing writers, composers, and performers who have taken part in previous 10 Minute Musicals projects. Um, So each week you'll be hearing not just from myself and Ang Harrod, but from writers and performers who were involved in the 10 Minute Musicals projects. Now, 10 Minute Musicals actually started in 2016. So it's not a super new venture for Leeway. No, no, it's been around a while. And I think we've done seven or eight projects so far. We've worked with, yeah, just over 140 artists, composers, writers, beatboxers, opera singers, um, yeah, from any genre. And we've kind of brought them together. We've worked with uh, The Other Room. They were our first partners. So massively grateful to them for kickstarting this, um, this project. So I first helped out on a 10 minute musical when it was still at the other room at the start of 2017, which was the second one. Is that right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. That's the first time we worked together. It is. I can't get rid of you now, look. Thick as thieves (laughs) now, some might say. Yeah. Um, So so yeah, it started there and then WMC supported us um, and it's been to Pontia, Focus Wales Festival, Queen's Theatre in Hornchurch. National Eisteddfod, um, Aberystwyth Art Centre, Gallery nice. in Arfon. So, yeah, it's, it's been far-reaching, which is great. And I'm just going to um, draw our attention back to a little term that you used when you were first describing 10-minute musicals and the idea of it being a laboratory. So what do you mean by that? Because that's quite an interesting term. The term laboratory is very much what it implies, I guess. It's investigating collaboration, I think, is the... If there was one fundamental thing that we were doing, it's it's investigating collaboration, and collaboration is so tough. So that the the laboratory 
um, it, because it's artist led, the whole process and the whole project keeps shape, shape shifting. So sure. every, and I'm learning by watching. So I, I kind of don't get invel- involved as a director. It's very much allowing the creatives in the room to shape the laboratory feel of the, the discoveries and the discussions. So it's all about just throwing these artists together in a space, giving them a few pointers that they may choose to use or choose not to use, and then just seeing what happens. Is that, is that right? Absolutely. So investigating sure. what is artist-led practice. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think we, we use that term a lot and uh, sometimes we're not great at articulating it. I'm not great at articulating it um, because it's such a visceral thing, isn't it? When you throw artists together, um, how, do you, how do you put a vocabulary to what happens there? Um, and I think this... Go on, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, I was just say this is interesting because you and I both have experience of working in a laboratory environment to develop our own practice as directors um which is i would you say that that so when you worked in that laboratory environment where, where did you do yours was uh, it austria in uh, Arus. so it's but so when you did your laboratory in sweden why don't you just talk a little bit about how um how that kind of shaped your idea for 10 minute musicals yeah it, um i was out there for about 10 days and i remember the first three days um becoming very frustrated because it was all about outcomes you know i'd fallen into the trap of of going from one show to the other and directing and looking at outcomes 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 all the so time. your mindset was all about out- outcomes completely about outcomes. and the the um the frame of the practice was not yeah Exactly. So then when I was thrown into this laboratory uh, environment for the first three days, um, playing, even though I have done this, you know, for years as an an actress and as a director, but I think when you're, when you go from one show to another, you haven't, you don't allow yourself the time to play or the structures in place within the arts doesn't allow you time to play. So you forget how to do it. Um, And it, it felt like a waste of time for three days. And I remember I had to check myself. <laughs> I go, whoa. Sure. Um, so the whole idea for this 10 minute musicals came from that really. And the learning that me, myself, you know, that, that I had and the shift that that, that that had in my own practice really. What, what about you? Yeah. Cause you were out in America, I think. That's right. So I did director's lab at Lincoln center in New York last summer. And that was really interesting because it was a room of about 80 directors. Um, and we were split into several different groups of, so in each group there was six directors, two actors and one stage manager and one designer. And we all were working on texts. And on our first day, we all just, uh, first day of working in these smaller groups. So six directors, we just sat in a circle in silence because nobody had any idea where to start because we are so used to, okay, um, the time that we have leading somewhere specific and having the pressure. Yeah. That I think as soon as that pressure is relieved from you, you kind of go, oh my goodness, what now? And also there's six directors and I think we're all just used to being sort of in control in some kind of way. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. I think nobody really knew where to start. Um, of course, by the end, I think we'd all learn a thing or two about how to collaborate and actually just to kind of enjoy, because you never get to have that experience, actually, of being in a room with six other minds who who think the same in some kind of way, but also think entirely differently. Yeah. Um, so, th- so it was really interesting because obviously this was last summer. So at this point, I'd already done a few 10 minute musicals. Yeah. Um, as a, as a director, as an assistant, I guess in in a way, um, but it's just interesting. Sort of when I step into the shoes of being a part of that collaborative process, how difficult even I found it after having done some ten minute musicals. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what my point is on that. It's just a funny it's, anecdote. But we all kind of, <laughs> we all we all assume that we know what our role is, don't we? Exactly. So we, we until know. the kind of end goal is not really important anymore. Um, because also I think what's, what's interesting is, is that we have been talking a lot about there being no end goal in 10 minute musicals, 
I guess you could argue that there, there's a, there's a goal to write a ten minute musical, but what does? But actually, I guess it's less about the ten minute musical being something that you would want to continue, and more about how did we get there? How did we get there to make ten minutes of content? I think if I was going to sum it up, what what this ten minute musical proves is the process is king, and if you trust the process, the outcome will always be the the right process. It'll be you know it's like an open space event that the the right people that. The, the people who are there are the right people to be there. And I think it's, it's exactly the pre same premise with 10 Minute Musicals and, and the lab kind of feel that follow a specific process, um, the one that you kind of form together with guidance and you will always, there will always be some outcome and a seed idea for something, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So and that kind that of sums it up, I think, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, but just to bring it back to this, the idea of what this podcast will be covering each week, um, as I've already said, we'll be having interviews with previous participants of the 10 Minute Musicals project, but also uh, every week we will be interviewing designer Corey Ship, who um, has put together some, I guess, artistic responses. Is that a good way to kind of surmise her work on yes, this and, and that we bring in Corey in because you know so these musicals are not um finished products so that we bring in that design-led process in quite early on as well and seeing um how Corey's response to the pieces will potentially shape shift what the writers decide to do with them at a later date sure so, so again so that, get it process again isn't it that extra part of the process being influential in the next steps if they if the writers choose to take them exactly. in terms of developing the piece yeah. sounds very uh sounds like an exciting podcast doesn't it i hope so luke i uh, just to say that i'll we're be listening we're showcasing people's work every week as well so yes um, of course little three minute excerpts of uh, everybody's work so um so yeah, that it's wrapped wrapped up around in uh, in in a product, I guess. So we can get an essence of um, how these writers write, what kind of um, influences influence them, and and showcase that as well. Absolutely, that's really exciting. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, a wide range of different types of ten minute musicals as we go forward. Thank you for joining us on Leeway Productions podcast, 10 Minute Musicals. Tune in next week when we will be interviewing Melanie Stevens and Tobias Weatherburn, part of the writing team of the 10 Minute Musical, You and You and You and Me. Until then, see you next week. <laughs>